Building off the fundamentals from the previous section, we'll now put them to use in creating a dynamic page built entirely using D3. The data we will use to drive the page will be in the form of a JSON array. This will get us ready for using D3's AJAX methods to query the server for data. Here's what the page will look like once we're done with this section. It is a single page site with a list of our favorite flowers, color coded by their ease of growing. This may look like a simple HTML page, but we will step through the stages to get here, starting with constructing our data and page, then concluding the task by adding the legend shown at the bottom of this page. It's an incredibly underrated but useful task to spend time planning any project before diving in. For that reason, today we're going to talk about how we're planning to build the previously mentioned page. After that, we'll talk about the structure of the data we will have to drive the creation of the document. We can then start working on the baseline code for our page, appending new elements dynamically based on our data structure. We'll wrap up by inspecting these elements in the browser and show that the code we just wrote is working, though we won't yet see any output on the page itself. Let's start planning the page by writing down the things we would like the page to have. This will help inform our data structure. First, we'll need some sort of list for each of the flowers. Next, it would be nice to have images to go along with the flowers' names. At a glance, we would like to know which are the easiest flowers to grow. Finally, and most importantly, we'd like our page to be dynamic enough to accommodate any number of data items so we can add or subtract items without needing to reconstruct the page. Great! Now we've created our plan of attack. The next problem to tackle is to determine what our data structure will be. We already said that the list will be an unknown length, so we'll use an array to hold each item. But what will the fields be? For the sake of simplicity, let's say we'd like to have the following fields of data for each data point its name, Latin name, light source required, and ease of care on a scale from minus 5 to 5. This is what our hydrania will look like. To start working with such data, let's copy our template.html to index2.html and enter our title as My Favorite Flowers in both the header and body. We can then copy and paste the flower data from our flowers.js file into our new index2.html file script section. We'll then assign our array of data to the div elements we are planning to create. Although the amount of code we will need to write is not substantial, the order of our commands is extremely important, so we'll break this task down into three steps. 1. Select our container element. 2. Assign our data. 3. Enter in our new elements. Let's break this down a bit. We will be using the d3select and d3selectall methods a lot as these are an integral part of how d3 works. You can think of these methods as similar to the jQuery dollar sign method or the native document dot query selector if you are familiar with those. If not, think of them as a quick way to target any element or series of elements in a page using the same notation as CSS. That is, a dot name selects classes and a hash mark with a name selects tags by their ID. D3's select all will even select elements that don't yet exist, as you'll see shortly. The enter method is also a core peridium of the D3 library. It executes a set of operations on the portion of specified data that is not yet bound to a selected item. Given our array of five flowers in our data, those five items get bound to the five divs in our select all. However, those divs don't yet exist, so the first time this is run, the functions chained to enter will get executed five times. Should enter be called again on the same selection with five data items, the chained commands will be ignored. Let's run this in our browser 
and take a peek into the console inspector to make sure that our new elements have been added to the page. There they are! They have been! We had five objects in our data array, and five divs have been added to the content div. Drilling down in the inspector to view the properties of one of the given divs, we find that the data property holds the data responsible for entering the div. That's how the data is bound to its element. Excellent! Wrapping up, we came up with an array of flower objects to drive the creation of our page. Using that data, we created five div elements on our page, each one bound to one of the five flower objects in our data. In the coming videos, we'll add a bit more functionality and styles to make the page display all the content from our data.